All right, everyone, welcome back into another props video. Give me a touch on the top prop bets in NBA today on prize picks and underdog. We'll be touching on NFL in a separate NFL props video, but if we do have good props for that game, I will include it in the bet slip for the day. But first, I do want to get into a recap of yesterday. So yesterday ended up being a pretty awesome day when 14 for 20 on the day. Um, which really caps off what was a good week last week. Now, of course, we're going to have misses. That happened on Friday. I mentioned this. Uh, the Flex Friday slip was not good. Thankfully, it was on Flex Friday as well, but it was nice to have a good Sunday. Now, this slip just missed, missed out on going six for six. And when I say not all slates are created equal, this is kind of what I mean. This was one that was kind of clearly there for us for Sunday for the props. Um, very good stacking ability. And I do wonder if Micah Hyatt had not like gone banged up and missed a few snaps there, like a series and a half, I think. If he would have got there, very interesting there. End up coming back though. Still five for six, we'll take that. And that was one that did stand out. But we did have this one hit as well. So, you know, it's pretty awesome. These were kind of clearly the best bets that we had available on the day um, for Sunday. And then for what's worth, the NBA prop uh, slip went three for five. Jeremy Grant had like five turnovers. The game was kind of a blowout. He missed his game is over by point three. That was bittersweet. Now Sharp crushed his as expected. So all in all, that was a day that we'll take. And just like that, November is a profitable month. And that's how that's how the prize picks underdog prop and works. That's why we love it. That's why I love the structure of it. And that's why you guys should love the structure of it as well. But let's go ahead and get into this slate. So NBA, we got a lot of games. So I'll try to be as quick as possible. Dallas first, Orlando. This could be a good game. Um, Wendell Carter is out in this game. And so that could potentially create some value for us in terms of like maybe some bets that we can be on. Uh, Markel Folds currently a game time decision as well. And then Gary Harris is also out as well. So that could potentially create some value for us on the slate. And so I think the expectation is that we won't know what's going to happen with Markel Fultz right up until lineup lock but thankfully that is the opening game so you can kind of prepare for it in two ways so we know he's probably leaning more towards out I would assume but if he says we can expect Cole Anthony to get a little bit more work but it's going to be Jalen Suggs that would be the starter Jalen Suggs has been the one that's benefited and he's been someone that has actually really rewarded me the last two slates um he's been someone that was popping up like fantasy score wise the last two slates and if it's at 22 again which is what the line had been at the last couple of days for his fantasy score that's something that I like and like we look at the sample size from this season with Fultz and Gary Harris off the court. It is Cole Anthony getting a little bit more minutes, but Jalen Suggs is kind of the one that's a little bit more reliable because he'd be the one that we would, we would expect to start. Now with Orlando, because it is very much dependent on that news for Markel Fultz in terms of some of the prop bets, we're not going to get those, which is unfortunate. But like the two that benefit the most would be Suggs and also Wagner. Wagner was something that stepped up into a bigger role. And we also know that uh, Wendell Carter is going to be out as well. So at least with Wendell Carter out, we can actually get a good sample size of what we should be looking at. Now, full or sorry, Wagner is someone that sees about a 4% bump in usage, but a 12% bump or 12 bump in fantasy points scored. And I think that's just because they run him out a little bit more with the bigs and then Banchara as well, because they're not going to get Mo Wagner that many minutes. He's going to be capped at 20. And then also Goga as well as someone that actually got a surprising amount of minutes 26 and if he's someone that's going to start again and if we can kind of project him to get 20 minutes in this matchup he's someone that could go for a double double and if he has a low points rebounds and assists let's say a 15.5 or so i actually might be betting the over there given the matchup with dallas dallas is a team that you want to target via the bigs and so with wendell carter out and with goga expected to start if we can get him 20 minutes he should be able to produce at almost a point per minute basis but once again we're not getting those prop bets so it's tough to really spend that much time on it let's go ahead and move on to the other side of this game which would be dallas and again guys it's it's the tough part about doing content uh we're not getting any props for dallas just yet now i find that to be kind of strange that we're not getting any prop bets for dallas i'm wondering if they're thinking maybe Kyrie will be a strange like dmp in this game coming in off the back end of a back-to-back -back. i'm not really sure that's a strange one to me that we're not getting those props and really because of that we're probably not looking at anyone at all now grant williams was someone that popped up for over fantasy score yesterday and he has been a little bit undervalued by the market thus far this season given his role with the Dallas Mavericks who's basically their number three especially in terms of consistency so maybe that's someone we can be looking at for over fantasy score I think it was at like 21 last night and that was one that the data liked and that's one that's popping up again today so certainly one you could be looking at there but let's move on into the next game we are getting some props for this game did anyone see uh Jalen Duren's flagrant foul that was the second one that I'm getting him tossed kind of funny it was, it was pretty weak uh but Detroit is gonna be playing on the back end of back-to-back -back, so it's gonna be interesting to see kind of if they have some random players sit out 
Jaden Ivey is currently a game time decision though with an illness. Now Alec Burks is currently a game time decision as well. We look at the game over and under. It is a game that does have the risk of blowing out. Detroit is almost seven point dogs and the game over and under is you know pretty decent almost 225 so maybe maybe we can make some bets hopefully Detroit keeps it close and that's like the best we'd want to be making is something that echoes that but all in all this is probably a slate that we are staying away from now we are seeing Cade Cunningham for over six assists to be a decent one and that's because at 5.5 it was a heavy likely to get the over so both underdog and prize picks have bumped it up so i see that much more being valued as a push rather than a profit that we should be feeling great about for him to get the over now we do see turnovers is one that's popping up as well and i just want to take a peek at him as a player so if ivy sits i would kind of expect kate cunningham to get a slight bump in usage as well with uh, alec burst being out and i would expect his minutes to be up so something like turnovers would be something that we'd probably expect and we have seen him really struggle turnover wise thus far this season and i think that's because of that high usage rate but yeah if he's gained those minutes if this game does stay close enough for long enough and if those two players are out i would say the four rebounds would be something that we'd want to attack um especially right now where we're not going to get that many good ev bets that is something that will probably get bumped throughout the day to five and so maybe we can take advantage of that and then from there we're not really going to see any other props which to me is surprising i would have thought that we would got some jalen Dern or some uh, isaiah stewart props we're not and maybe that's just again maybe it's the back end of a back-to-back and prize picks underdog and the sports books are thinking maybe someone like jalen and Dern, who had set out you know two games in a row maybe he'll sit tough to say for sure now Dern, when he has gone the minutes he's been fine so in this game against okc got injured then in his next game back got into foul trouble and so last night where the game was a little bit of a blow it didn't need him to get 33 35 minutes like he had in the first two games he still had a solid day so if he's going to be active in this game i would say maybe points and rebounds is something we can you know use i think i think if it's at like 20 21 we could bet the over there anything higher maybe a, a stay away but the matchup with golden state is not what i'm too worried about like kevon looney is not really gonna hinder their production at all so we'll go ahead and get into Golden State, seeing if we are getting any good props for them. So looking at the Golden State Warriors, we do get Steph Curry for over 4.5 assists. Another one points, rebounds, and assists. Rebounds. Um, but yeah, really the one we want to attack is going to be Curry for over 4.5 assists. Now that'll be one that I'm assuming is going to get bumped. But let's just take a peek at if it's still plausible at 5. Yeah, probably not. If it's at 5, we're staying away because that'd be a push. But against Detroit, maybe points, rebounds, and assists. But again, that feels a little bit thin at a 51% likelihood to hit. So again, we'll go ahead and move on to the next game. I am recording this video a little bit earlier than I typically would. My three-month-year-old is asleep right now, so I have time to uh, do it right now, and you got to take advantage of that. So uh, we're not getting all the full allotment of props that we typically would be getting uh, if I were to do it an hour later. But looking at this next game, we'll go to Spurs, Indy. Now, guys, this game is a game that I think we should be stacking. Yes, it has an eight-point spread. That is a concern. Don't get me wrong. Kind of surprised that Indy is an eight-point favorite, but 238 for an over and under, that is highly intriguing. And if the Spurs can keep it close enough for long enough. I am going to enjoy that game. Now, we do need to get news on Devin Vessel. If he is out, we're going to see the usage shift to Calvin Johnson like it did last night, like expected. And so, again, we're not getting any props for that game because I do think you know, having a high usage rate player like that currently questionable is something that they need to wait and see on or else the lines that they put out might be terrible. We did see Malachi Branahan step up into a bigger role with uh, Vassal out, and that is something we w would expect. That is something we saw last season. That's something we should expect this season. I think we can project him to get right around 25 minutes as long as the game stays close. And he is someone that might be disrespected by prize picks or underdog if they come out with those lines for us because they have other players there, Trey Jones, Sohan, Calvin Johnson, Webby, and also Zach Collins, that he could kind of be a forgotten guy where his role was kind of what we would expect from him, maybe a little bit more shooting efficiency than we would expect but he was coming in off of a bunch of poor nights of shooting so it's no shock that he finally had a better night shooting uh good matchup i do think this is a matchup we want to be attacking jeremy sohan has been someone that's been a little bit too inconsistent for me to trust especially because he's not really making that many baskets so i'm probably staying away from him if you're looking at a prop for him it would probably be if we can get uh rebounds and assists at like eight and a half or even nine maybe nine and a half would be too high but yeah at nine i still probably would bet the over at eight and a half i'd definitely bet the over for him from there trey jones has been someone that has been playing close to 30 minutes per game in games that stay close for the most part and I think with Vassal out we're going to see him get those minutes as well like he had last game and if that occurs if we can get his prop line of assist at a low number that is something to me that's going to be very interesting and so with uh Vassal out the court we have seen Branham get 92 minutes he's the guy that you know we kind of expect his per 36 production is 15 points four rebounds 3.9 assists and the steal okay we can expect that but the next player up and it's very close is Trey Jones 
who averages 13 points per 36, 4.5 rebounds and 7.7 .7 assists. Now, I don't think we can project him to get 36 minutes, but I do think in a game that's supposed to be a close game, we can expect Trey Jones to be involved still especially given the minutes report that we have here. And he is someone assist wise. I do think we'll probably get a good number on uh, because the data so far this season isn't really saying huge assist guy. Now he's had two, two really big assist games, Houston and Phoenix, but for the most part, that could be a sneaky good one. And then yes, Keldon Johnson is someone that, you know, was expected to step up into a bigger role against Toronto. That is exactly what happened. Um, you know, it was very good at shooting the basketball in that game. This was the Keldon Johnson that I expected at the start of the season. Okay. Maybe not the two steals for sure, but I think there's been a little bit of a figuring out phase, but going against Indy, I do think he's someone we want to be looking at and he is someone we can bank on to get minutes. Okay. He had 38 minutes in that game against Toronto. It was a close game and if you look at his per 36 production with Vassol off the court it might not be a big bump in production but I think we can kind of just lock in the production he averages 21.2 points per 36 4.8 rebounds 4.3 steals or 4.3 assists and he averages 18 shot attempts and that's huge we saw him get that exact number last game and so in a very intriguing game if we can get his points prop at like 20 point 21 point five or something like that i think we'd be fine better than the under i'm very curious as to where the lines come out for that team and for what's worth webby has been someone that's been extremely consistent i do think depending on what his fantasy scores we might just want to be better than the over there in, in a game like this i think i'm fine with that zach collins i don't know if we can touch him does get a good matchup though and he played heavy minutes the last couple of games and that is intriguing so in games that stays closed for the most part except for that game against phoenix he has been able to get some minutes and so that is something i do think we can be interested in and that's where i'm like all right we probably are going to want to game stack this game so now we go ahead and get into the other side of the basketball we got the pacers and obviously the pacers are going to be probably a better spot for us we are seeing tyrese halbin for, for over 15.5 uh points or assists and rebounds is probably one that we want to be looking at and I, that's i'm fine with that he's been someone that's been a you know highly efficient contributor uh, you could be looking at miles turner for over rebounds and assists as well those are two pretty good ones i think for them we're probably just gonna be looking at um fantasy score miles turner something that can get some blocks and given his low points rebounds and assist line i think we might want to be doing that and Halliburton as well like we're seeing his line at 38.5 to probably be right uh, but given this matchup i do think that those are two players that can go off i do think if we're game stacking here we probably want to favor more of the spurs so with that let's go ahead and move on into the next game we got washington versus the sixers another game that's projected to be a blowout we're probably not going to get that many good props for this game washington has pretty much been a dumpster fire and we do know that daniel gaffer currently a game time decision same thing for denny um if those two sit that's really going to create um probably a stay away this game would be even more of a blowout then so yeah Kyle Kuzma, if if uh, Gafford sits, is going to expect to start at center. Maybe Mike Muscala, but it's going to be ugly, okay? And so for Washington right now, given the fact that it's expected to be a blowout, it's no shock that we're seeing some of these prop bets be prop bets where the unders are being favored. Now, I will say, if it does stay close, a bet like this, Kyle Kuzma for over points, rebounds, and assists, is probably one that would hit. Same thing for someone like Tyus Jones, points and rebounds. But I think if we're doing that, we're probably just doing uh, points, rebounds, and assists for Tyus Jones. That being said, these are two props that I don't think we want to chase because of how bad and how inconsistent Washington has been. I don't like that. All of Washington has really been terrible. And so again, really the only one I would probably like is Tyus Jones, but that's really a bet on the game staying close. And I don't want to bet on that. I do think on the flip side that we're going to see Maxi be a pretty good one, especially for maybe fantasy score. Uh, I don't get the lines that we're getting on him. They are still too low when you consider the production that he had last season with James Harden off the court. He averages almost 30 points per 36 and like six assists. And like the lines that we're getting on him, should be what he has done thus far this season and it's strange to me like this might not be a profit that hits today okay like you know there's regression you can't consistently be dominating this much but at the same time i think if we continue to get lines at this number for him it's going to be something we want to continue to attack and then that being said tobias harris has been playing much better as of recent and i hate that the screen is bouncing but he's someone that i like and again if this game does kind of blow out well you would think that the sixers are going to be part of the reason as to why the one player i'm a little bit worried about is kelly Oubre. he hasn't really had a poor night shooting and although he's in the starting unit looking really good i kind of worry that that game could be coming for him and then Embiid, yeah again in a blowout he's probably going to be part of the reason as to why but i'd much rather go with these lower lines for harris and for or Maxi, where it's a little bit, we have a little bit of safety baked in there. And I'm actually curious as to what would happen with Melton's minutes. 
he has been someone that hasn't closed out any games thus far the last two games and that's why i'm curious because maybe in a game that's a blowout he actually ends up closing the game out because the last two games i've had him for over like um i think it was fantasy score in both games and he missed out by like a half a point and like a point and you look at the minutes and it was super frustrating both those games have been blowouts in favor of philly and i don't know if that's i guess that phoenix wasn't really a blowout until the end toronto was so it's it's interesting there like i don't know what to do with him because he didn't close out those two games and most of the games thus far he's only played 30 minutes twice but this game was an extreme blowout against portland so yeah it's just difficult to say what to do that being said let's go ahead and take a peek at which are the best prop bets for the sixers tonight see if we are getting any good bets and to me i might see this as more of a stacking opportunity i think stacking harris and stacking maxi does make sense hopefully those correlates so maybe maxi points and assists i'd be fine with that one i'm actually good with that i'm going to write that down that has about a 52.3 percent chance to hit so again guys i want to keep echoing this home the thing with nba at least right now especially when i'm doing these videos is that we're not getting that many great EV bets. These are much, very much game theory based bets. And we can see right now that this would be a much better bet on underdog we, where we are getting a half of an edge there. You know, that could be the difference between hitting or not hitting. That happened with Jeremy Grant last night for me for fantasy score. So that little stuff can add up. But I do think given his production last year and this season with James Harden off the court, this line is just simply too low. And let's just take a quick peek at him in games that have been blowouts. Obviously a really good matchup against Washington. That's why I like him. But yeah, the only game in which he didn't get there was against Toronto played 40 minutes in that game that was a game in which he really didn't do anything in the first half and it was very much just Tobias Harris playing really well in that game in the first half and then the second half Maxi was a little bit more needed and he produced so it's just kind of a weird game where he took more of a backseat role in the first half and then obviously tougher to get there in that game but yeah I think I think we got a good spot there for them obviously the worry is the blowout out too fast moving on to the next game here we got Los Angeles versus Miami a one point spread a 222 and a half over and under so kind of a less appealing game we do know that they are pretty banged up though the Lakers. Okay. Hachi is out. Jackson Hayes, a game time decision. Yeah. Gabe Vincent out and Jared Vanderbilt still out for Miami. Nothing really too much. I mean, Jimmy Butler currently questionable. I would assume given the game line, Vegas is expecting him to play and I'll take a peek at the starting lineup for this game. Yeah. Jimmy Butler is expected to play. The interesting thing of note is that they have been switching in and out their starting lineups. High Smith's starting or Jaime Hawk has a starting just kind of interesting to note but we can see pretty banged up there for the Lakers and with that being said we're gonna see someone like D'Angelo Russell probably shoot the basketball a lot and probably someone that should have a good night shooting at the same time it is Miami a little bit more uh, tougher defensive matchup and he is someone that really has not shot the basketball well thus far this season I mean he's had one really good game against Orlando and then he came back in that same matchup and struggled. So yeah, he's very much hit or miss. And because of that, we probably are going to get some good lines on him. I'm actually very curious about that. And he's one of those guys where it's either he's on and he's hitting his overs pretty easily or he's off and he's not getting there. Very frustrating. And so, yeah, I would say that this line is probably too low given the amount of shot attempts he's going to put up. Like he's probably going to put up at least 17 in this game. And we look at like the usage rate and everything with Gabe Vincent off the court. It's not like a big sample size. It actually is 150 minutes going into this. Russell does see only a 1% bump in usage averages 17.6 points three rebounds 5.4 assists and about 16 shot attempts per 36 with them off the court and we can protect him to have those minutes off the court now we do need to toss in those other players as well and so with those other players out he sees a little bit more of a bump in usage and a little bit more of a bump in shot attempts so all in all that we know with him it's going to be whether or not he's he's shooting the basketball well. Austin Reeves for over 3.5 assists is the best prop bet that we're getting for the Lakers. Does feel a little bit too thin for me. And really the rest of the bets that we were getting for them are a little bit too thin. Maybe Christian Wood is someone we could be looking at if a prop bet arises for him because he's someone that should be forced into some minutes if Vanderbilt and if Hayes sits, obviously he's someone that is a good point per minute producer. And so if those players sit, he's probably going to get 30 minutes. The line will probably be lower because it's a matchup against Miami, but he's most likely going to be going against the Miami's backups. So a little bit easier for him. I would say the line probably will be at like nine and a half points. And I would maybe favor the over there. I'd probably want to do rebounds and points for him though. But again, that's kind of speculation. Let's go ahead and move on to the next game. So looking at the next game, we got the Bucks versus the Nets. Two teams that have kind of been headaches. Now, the Nets were a team that were projected to get blown out a couple of nights ago. And I was like, I don't know if I see it that way. Uh, two players I had talked up in that matchup were on the Boston side of it. 
Porzingis and Brown. They end up getting their overs. And then the Nets players that were good values ended up getting there as well. So I hit a six for six slip. And that's kind of why I go through this process, guys, because we don't always know what's going to occur, but we can kind of prepare for when the news drops. And so looking at it for the Nets, we know Nick Claxton is still out. Lonnie Walker is currently a game time decision. That could be big. Okay. And then Cameron Johnson is still out. So we still have a lot of their big producers still sitting out in this game. And so that being said, like someone like Brooke Lopez should be able to feast in this game, given the fact that the Nets are not running out a big. And so I want to see if we're getting any good prop bets for Milwaukee, specifically for Brooke Lopez. That is what I'm looking for. And, you know, we're not exactly getting that. But for Giannis, we're getting 11.5 rebounds as a very favorable prop. And so that is something we could be looking at. I don't think that that is too thin at all. I think that there is some actionable takes against that because obviously Brooklyn, they don't really have a big. And so the issue that we have with him is that this team has been so inconsistent. And so the reason why we are getting that line where it is, is because of the fact that the Nets do not have any, you know, really big bigs to negate that. I would rather get um, Brooke Lopez in some capacity. We can see his rebounds is at five and a half. Probably don't want to touch that. I think the one we'd want to be going in on him is his points and assist prop at 12.5. If he's able to take advantage of the matchup, and I do still think we should be kind of taking the wait and see approach with the Bucks, they are still in a figuring out phase. But Brooke Lopez, I don't know what happened against Toronto. I know they got just absolutely blown out in that game. That's a game where I kind of just write off. And so in every other game thus far this season, he has gotten close to getting this over or has gotten the over. And so to me, given the fact that he should have a better matchup, that is one that I like. And again, guys, these are all better bets that I would say on the sports books, because again, on prize and underdog, we want to be shooting for a 54% chance to hit. Anything lower than that, they make for better individual bets on the sports books because the payout is better and the percent likelihood is obviously reflected in the odds that you're getting there. Um, from there, we're really not getting that many props. I do want to take a peek at Chris Middleton's uh, just minutes report because he has been someone that's been extremely efficient, not playing that many minutes. So we did get up to 21 last game. And so if that is something that's going to continue, maybe maybe his points and assist prop at 14.5 is not a terrible one. And that's simply because if he gets a little bit more minutes, still shooting the basketball 10 or so times. And a lot of his shot attempts have been pretty open and the Bucks just look better with him on the court. And obviously if he gets a little bit more minutes, that's pretty favorable for us. So not terrible, but all in all, it doesn't look like we're getting too many elite prop bets there just yet. Let's go ahead and move on into Brooklyn. So with Brooklyn, we know Claxton's out. We know Cameron Johnson's out. We get that. We are seeing Ben Simmons for over 8.5 rebounds is a decent prop bet. I don't know if I exactly agree with that. Let's take a peek at that. Now, I do want to pull up their starting lineup. Like, he is expected to start at point guard tonight, whereas Finney Smith is expected to be the center. That could flip. We might see Cam Thomas jump into the starting lineup. Like, we don't know for sure what's going to happen there. And that's what's annoying about the Nets in some capacity. But I don't know. I think that would help his rebounds, honestly, if he uh, if he is playing point guard because then he's not matched up against Lopez or Giannis. And maybe they're doing this so he stays out of foul trouble. But that is a seemingly good line that we are getting eight and a half there for a guy that's gone that in every single game thus far, especially with Cam Johnson still out and with Nick Claxton still out. Like, he's still going to get a lot of minutes. Uh, Cam Thomas is very much a game-dependent one and this is one in which you could stack if the game stays close like it's projected to cam thomas is going to be part of the reason as to why cam thomas is getting out there and just chucking guys just absolutely chucking 24 18 19 17 19 shot jumps he is just shooting the basketball a ton and so when he's shooting the basketball well obviously it's it's a pretty low line then and if he's matched up against dame a little bit that is that's kind of appealing to me. Dame's been struggling. The Bucks defense has been struggling as a whole. Uh, I do think Spencer Dinwiddie could be in for a better game, but we're not really getting that many good prop bets for Dinwiddie. And this line for Spence or for Ben Simmons does seem a little bit too low at 23.5. But again, that's a better bet on the sports books. We move on to the next game here. We got the Kings versus the Rockets. Kind of a close game. Maybe this is a game that we can attack. Uh, we got to look at the injury report here. We are seeing that De'Aaron Fox is still out. Okay, so that's going to open up maybe some potential value here. For the Rockets, we're not too worried about the players that are listed as out. And so what's funny about the Kings is when we look at last year data, we would have thought that Keegan Murray would have stepped up into a bigger role with De'Aaron Fox off the court. And it still kind of suggests that. And that is what has happened. The issue that we have seen with Keegan Murray is that he has not been able to shoot the basketball well the last few games. One for eight, zero for seven. He has been terrible shooting the basketball. And so I think last game, especially we saw his production also be terrible across the board. You know, when you're having a bad game, shooting the basketball, a kind of tumbling effect into the rest of your game, especially coming in off of two bad nights. I don't see him having another poor night shooting, especially with a lot of those being open looks. You would think he would have a better night shooting. And so... I would want to see maybe a points prop for him be one that's popping up, but at 15.5, it's probably a stay away. And like, to me, that would probably be my favorite bet with them, but we also are getting Davion Mitchell for over 4.5 assists as seemingly a decent prop bet as well. We'll take a peek at that. 
So he's the one that's been starting. He's been getting the minutes as well. Uh, the assist is the one that I like because as a whole, he's not someone that we have typically been able to rely on as a Darren Fox replacement. But if there's anything, he's going to have a little bit more usage operating the point. So I don't mind that Malik Monk is someone that has actually stepped up a decent amount with him off the court, with Fox off the court. And Herter as well, like he is someone that's a little bit hit or miss. I didn't catch what occurred in this game, but obviously that seems to be more of an outlier. Maybe it was a blowout and everything. So I don't know exactly what happened there. And so all in all, we're probably not getting that many great pops there so move on to the next game here got the hawks versus the thunder uh, probably going to be a good game three and a half point spread sga is out in this game it's a very high over and under this is a game that we want to be attacking uh and then looking at the hawks we don't have anyone so this is a game that we definitely want to be looking at in terms of stacking the issue that i have is like last year we saw that Jalen williams and sga were two players that definitely stepped up with as you have the court like it was pretty easy to tell and last game it was chet holmgren in the first half just dominating and that was the worry because that's what the data had told us had happened thus far this season now i don't know exactly what to expect there okay um because josh giddy and Jalen williams both had really good second halves and so it is a little bit risky there because we don't exactly know what's going to occur so looking at okay see let's just break it down like josh giddy you do expect to have a better game 31 minutes in that game and that's that's the thing he hasn't really been getting that many minutes now he did have six turnovers in that game kind of sloppy there and you would expect him to have more assist than he's been having he's had a weird season and for me i probably just want to stay away from him even though he's someone that typically speaking we'd want to look at with sj off the court now dort is someone that did step up a little bit more had a ton of points we don't expect that nine for 12 six for six i think we probably i don't know what is his points prop at we are seeing points rebounds and this prop to be something we, we want to be betting the over i'm actually curious as to what his points are though 14 and a half yeah i'd probably favor the under there like if we're looking for a bet in that game i'd probably want to bet the under there uh let's see other ones Jalen williams uh i'm just gonna sort by prize picks because i just want to see if we have the stack and opportunity there for those games and i still think chet holmgren I, th I still think this is too low and i'm very curious as to where his fantasy score is going to come out i hope by the time i'm done with this video we have the fantasy score props and i can refresh the data on my end and give you guys that but that is seemingly the best one again with sga off the court thus far this season he's one of the players that does benefit the most and i'll give you guys that data real quick so yes with sga off the court chet holmgren averages 48 fantasy points per 36 20 three points per 36 8.7 rebounds 4.4 assists and so seemingly just right there in his points and rebounds that line is seemingly too low and so that's why i like that gets a good matchup going against atlanta as well uh from there josh giddy averages 20 points per 36 8.2 rebounds and only 6.6 .6 assists and so josh giddy is someone that we need to see get more minutes that has not occurred that's the worry with him and then looking at Jalen williams he should be the play here he really should be he averages 18 points per 36 5.3 rebounds and 7.4 assists let's take a bigger deep dive into him as a play last game because he is someone again you would have thought was stepped up eight for 12 like he shot the basketball well and so that's kind of my worry it could have been a matchup thing with golden state now that was a very high scoring game as well so it's kind of weird right like the data tells us we should be bending the over here and so maybe that's where in a game stack we're doing chet holmgren we're doing Jalen williams and feeling okay about that and we're not getting any of the secondary uh players in this game just yet like carson wallace he's someone that we expect to get 36 minutes uh maybe someone we could like be looking at isaiah joe is someone that typically does step up with sj off the court and we did see that last game as well but not that many shot attempts that's the thing with the warriors it almost seems like everyone else was shooting the basketball so well sorry for the thunder it almost seemed like they were all shooting the basketball so well that players like giddy who struggled and Jalen williams didn't exactly need to you know step up and chet holmgren obviously that's a big role that he's playing do you want to call it that the other Jalen williams was back good for him uh and then let's look at atlanta seeing if we're getting any good prop bets for him and the first one that stood out to me was actually Dejounte murray's uh points rebounds and assist prop now the data doesn't like it but i'm like all right if we see this game's the game we want to be going after maybe we're looking at him for points rebounds and assists and again this is where i hate about nba lately it's that like all the prop bets that we probably would be going on on they're not correlating very well with what the data says so that's the annoying part but Dejounte Dante Murray has been a stud recently and really the whole season has been extremely consistent. So if this game does get a slight bump because of the high over and under and because it's expected to stay close, I do think someone like Dejounte Murray, who is shooting the basketball a ton, should be able to get there. And I'm not too worried about the defense of matchups that he has. So he is someone that I do like in a game stack for the over. We are seeing like Trey Young for over 23.5 points is a seemingly good one, especially if you are trying to stack that game. So those are two options I don't mind. The issue that we have in this game is the big. So Clint Capella, you know, 
in a close game, I think we can expect him to get 30 minutes, but they have been so sporadic. I don't see him getting into foul trouble, but Anika Agonku has also been getting a decent amount of run as well. He's actually been seemingly playing just as good. And so he's someone that could get more run. Jalen Johnson has been someone that has been playing well. I don't know if we're getting any prop bets for him just yet. We are not, but maybe he's someone we're looking at in a game stack as well. All right, so we got a few more games. Utah versus the Bulls, a four-point spread. Uh, Jazz are underdogs in that game. For this game, no one's really out that we're too worried about. I mean, Caruso, game time decision. Patrick Williams, game time decisions. Those two players haven't really done much, so I'm not sure if we're going to get any good props in this game. So we'll take a peek. We'll go through the process, see if we have any good ones popping up. I don't think we will. Uh, DeMar DeRozan has been a little bit of an annoyance, and so I'm probably just staying away from him until he's a little bit more consistent. And with that, we do see Colby White has been someone that has been struggling. I don't mind the under points and assists there at 17.5. He has been someone that, for the most part, has been very underwhelming. Now, I would say with Caruso, probably... If he's out, that would help Kobe White. But he is someone that, you look at the points, he's only had one good game shooting. And so this is kind of like that prop that I said earlier with Maxi, where I don't know if the Lions have adjusted enough for how they're playing in this system. And so that's someone I think we could be looking at for the under 17 assists and rebounds, 17.5 assists and rebounds or assistant point. Looking at Utah, I'm actually curious for uh, John Collins. Does get a better matchup, especially if Patrick Williams is out. All right, so we got points for 13.5 for John Collins as a decent one. As you guys know, he's been someone that we've been looking at pretty heavily thus far this season for points, rebounds, and assists because really the market hadn't adjusted for how well he'd been playing. And that's probably one I would be looking at again today. Um, maybe we're looking at fantasy score as well, but all in all, this is a number that I think he's consistently going to get over just given the usage that he's had, given his role that he's had in this team. And then Laurie Marketing as well. Like he's been a little bit too inconsistent to trust. And I do think that that's why I think he goes hand in hand. Like John Collins is having a better season because Laurie Marketing is not having a good season. Jordan Clarkson, a little bit too hit and miss. Um, same thing with Horn Tucker. I don't want to touch those. So let's go ahead and move on into the next game. In the next game, we got the Celtics versus the Timberwolves. Lines adjusting live right now. Four point spread. Boston is favored to win. The over and under set at 224. Looking at the injury report, Derek White, currently a game time decision. Personal, it's tough to really gauge whether or not he's going to be there. Now, we did see last game that with Derek White off the court, the players that we kind of thought would step up into bigger roles were Porzingis and Jalen Brown. That did occur, but also Drew Holiday did as well. It makes sense. You take away a starter. You don't really have a good replacement for that starter. The other starters are just going to pick up the slack. The reason why someone like Tatum didn't is because, well, he's already at the peak of his production. So I do think someone like Drew Holiday for rebounds and assists being at that low number of 10 and a half, that could be something that we're looking at here. And he's someone in that last game, nine and 10. So that is an extremely low line. And with Derek White, off the court thus far this season, we have seen Drew Holiday get the biggest minutes bump. He averages 16.7 points, 7.9 rebounds, and 6.4 assists. So that line to me at 10.5 is seemingly too low because he averages 7.9 rebounds and then 6.4 assists per 36 with him off the court. I do think we can expect him to get those minutes as well. So again, guys, this is a better bet on the sports horse. We are very much not getting great EV bets just yet. And I say that I'm going to show you guys the fantasy score props. Those have been populated into prize picks. Those are probably going to be the ones we want to go with, but individually, these are going to be good bets. And so that's why I kind of like stacking a little bit as well, but that is seemingly a good one that we're getting. And then from there, maybe you want to roll with Jalen Brown for over rebounds and assists as well. It's not, it does feel a little bit too thin. We are seeing that we are getting projections though for Derek white. And so let's see the start projected starting lineup here. Game time decisions. So very interesting. And I do think this is like risk reward guys, because we could run out these overs for Jalen Brown and drew holiday knowing that we're getting a very good edge if Derek White sits. And I don't mind that approach. That's that's a risk-reward thing that I do a lot in NBA. And so looking at Jalen Brown, his per 36 production with White off the court, 28 points, 8.7 rebounds, and two assists. So the assists we can not expect to really be there, but the line that we're getting on him for Derek White or for Jalen Brown was at nine. And so he's averaging almost nine rebounds. So that's seemingly a good one there as well. We did see that Al Horford was the a very big beneficiary to Derek White being off the court. And I'm actually like, I would expect him to start if Derek White's off the court. Like we see this projected starting lineup for them right here. It would just be Jalen Brown shifting down, Tatum shifting down, and then Al Horford playing the power forward spot. And or... You know, maybe the center and Porzingis playing power forward. However, they want to attack Minnesota. It doesn't really matter going against Minnesota. That's kind of a mute point. And because they're going against Minnesota, I don't think I want to touch Porzingis. So we'll move on into Minnesota there. And so looking at Minnesota, uh, Rudy Gobert under 11.5 rebounds is seemingly a decent bet. Um, Towns for over points, rebounds. I don't think I want to touch those guys. And honestly, given the matchup, I don't know if I want to touch really any of these guys. Maybe Anthony Edwards rebounds. In no, I don't. I don't. So and it's just the matchup based thing. I, I don't really trust that. I think with Al Horford, 
being active in that game, it actually, one, it makes sense going against the two bigs. He probably will get mints regardless. And I just see that as more of a stay away. So again, we'll go ahead and move on to the next game. The last game on the slate, we got the Pelicans versus the Nuggets. This is seemingly going to be a fun game, especially, nope. CJ McConnell's out. Okay, that just that happened last yesterday. Interesting. I did not see that. Jamal Murray's out as well. So definitely an interesting game. We're gonna have to spend some time on this one. 220 for the over and under, a six point spread. Let's get into this. This is a fun game. I did not see that news until I started this video. So with Jamal Murray off the court, who could we be looking at here? Okay. We see Aaron Gordon's rebounds and assist prop is one that's kind of popping up. You look at his per 36 production, and I don't know if we can bank on him getting 36 minutes. He does average nine rebounds though and 4.7 assists. And the reason I say we probably can't bank on his minutes at all is he could get a bump. Probably not. And his minutes have been for the most part, very sporadic. Now, 35 minutes in the last two games. And that to me, again, I feel like that's a better bet on the sports book to bet the over, especially the fact that they are favoring the under there. That's a very interesting line that we are getting. So probably one that I'm staying away from. We do see that Reggie Jackson actually gets the most minutes with Jamal Murray off the court. So I'm actually curious if we're going to get any props for him. Reggie Jackson per 36, which Jamal Murray off the court averages 14.8 rebounds, 14.8 points, 3.1 rebounds and seven assists. Now, again, we don't think he's going to get that many minutes, but definitely a player that should get a bump in production. KCP probably going to get uh, locked into more minutes. He averages 19.1 points per 36. He's not going to get that guys uh, 1.7 rebounds and 1.3 assists. Like his role is a defensive player. He averages three assists or three steals, sorry, per 36. And so are we getting a KCP steals prop or maybe blocks and steals for KCP? Because that'd be what we'd want to roll with. We're not steals. KCP, please. No, but definitely something to look for if that pops up. Then the next one we are seeing is like Michael Porter Jr., maybe Aaron Gordon for over points, rebounds, and assists. I kind of like that one. His production per 36. And we did see the last couple of games that Aaron Gordon has been getting more minutes. His per 36 production is 29 or sorry, it's 16.7 points, 9.4 rebounds, and 4.7 assists. So given that, given his projected minutes, I would say that he is a good candidate to get that over. Michael Porter Jr. doesn't see a big bump in minutes with uh, Jamal Murray off the court. So I don't think we can really bank on that. So it does feel a little bit more thin than we would have thought. The biggest bumps in usage actually go to KCP. Yeah, it's basically to KCP. Maybe that's something we have there. I don't, I don't know. I don't really like it. But maybe, honestly, I think it could be worthwhile for KCP to only be at 10.5 points when we look at his per 36 production being 19 points it's a small sample size on the season don't get me wrong but there could be something there especially if he is picking up a little bit of point guard work there interesting thought but we're probably just gonna see reggie jackson picking up that work then on the flip side of that we got cj mccollum on this game in previous games it had been um brandon ingram being out zion being out so it's very interesting that we are getting cj mccollum out and it's i would say we're not gonna have a big sample size as to what to do with that but we are seeing maybe herbert jones for over 3.5 rebounds i'm actually curious who's going to start at point guard for them dyson daniels interesting i would i would expect brandon ingram to get a bump in the usage instead uh and i'm i'm hoping that the data says that as well we saw that last year and yeah so brandon ingram gets a 10.7 bump in usage with cj mccollum off the court we look at his per 36 production with him off the court this is a very small sample size guys but 30 points, 10 rebounds, 6.2 assists. We take a peek at last season's data. I'm going to put it with Zion on the court. I can't do that. Never mind. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess I can. Zion played enough. But I want to put Zion on the court because he's going to be active in this one. So we'll do that because I do think that that's very interesting. So looking at it last year. And no, we have a very small sample size last year with CJ McCall off the court, obviously, I guess, uh, and Zion being on the court. So, yeah. We have a very small sample size, but to me, this is seemingly way too low for Brandon Ingram. He is someone last year in the same scenario, and we're seeing fa 44 fantasy score and probably bending over there as well. I'm actually curious as to what the data says when I refresh it. And so with that being said, I'm going to do a refresh here just for the whole slate to see if we're getting any awesome props. So guys, these would be my favorite bets as like individual bets. Uh, we did see that Kate Cunningham's turnover prop was one that was taken away. I could see that one being brought back just as an FYI. So that is something I think we could be looking at there. Uh, and then looking at these ones as well, um, Maxi, I, I just think he's being undervalued now that a game could blow out. Brooke Lopez, very much dependent on him shooting the basketball or, or him even getting shot attempts. I do think against Brooklyn, that's going to be a good spot. Uh, ben Simmons actually like the fact that he's not going to be going against Brooke Lopez or Giannis. Match-wise, he's projected to be the point guard. Kobe White, that's just kind of a bet with Maxi where I just think the data hasn't caught up on the season just yet. And then Drew Holiday, this did get bumped from 10.5, so less appealing for sure. But this is very much a bet on Kobe White being out. And sure, can still get there if he's not ruled out, but it's definitely less appealing then. Now I'll show 
you guys my bet of the day. And yes, guys, this is what I wanted to see. Brandon Ingram, I said I'd like for over 40 fantasy score, and the data is telling us that as well. <sighs> Yes, that is something that hasn't occurred too much. So we do see Michael Porter Jr. under fantasy score is one that's popping up. I don't love that. Zion Williams under fantasy score is one that's popping up as well. He's definitely been inconsistent. I don't know if I love that one either. And so really today, Maxi, that still feels too low for him. I, I would maybe rather go with that. Tobias Harris, this one is definitely too low. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, guys, I'm just going to say like Harris over fantasy points and Ingram over fantasy score. Take a quick peek elsewhere. If you guys want to toss in these bets, you can. There's their bets that kind of correlate with how tonight's expected to go. We'll take a peek at discrepancies real quick. A couple of discrepancies there that we're seeing. NHL wise, we're getting a seemingly good bet with Alexander there and also Evan Rodriguez. So two decent bets we got there. And so for the bet of the day, I know the Tobias Harris one wasn't one that was popping up as a uh, necessarily good EV bet by any means, but I think that line is too low given the matchup with Washington. He's been an extremely consistent producer, and maybe that's the concern is that he has gotten that over five straight times, so it's due to come down. And obviously, that's why the line's there. They think eventually he's going to have a bad game. Uh, but Brandon Ingram with CJ McCollum off the court, he should be able to crush this number um usage is going to go up and i think we're fine with that and then the two really good ones that we are getting for nhl currently is the over shots on goal hopefully those are still there by the time you guys get there that's gonna be all for this video hopefully you guys enjoyed the coverage make sure to give a like and subscribe I do appreciate it if you guys want access to the 9to5sports.com uh cheat sheet for both underdog and prize picks click the link in the description below it's available for just ten dollars a month let's have a good slate thanks for watching as always let's keep cashing